blowing past data caps. Tim Cook aids in helping a customer unlock his AT&T iPhone as he moves to Canada. Free 4G data from Net Zero. Air display coming to the new iPad in a big, big way. iPhoto selling like hotcakes. And Hipstagram integrates with hi- Instagram. It's Thursday, March 22nd, 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning and welcome to another edition of iWake. Today's show has two main focuses, mobile data slash phones and apps. To get to kick it off is the expected news that LTE iPad owners are blowing past their data caps already. The first example is something you'd probably blow past your data cap anyways with 3G. So here it is. This guy Brandon Wells got the new iPad last Friday, started wirelessly streaming March Madness games the next day, and by Saturday night was out of his connection, out of his cap. Two hours of college basketball, which he viewed mounted to his car dashboard and live at tournament games, had burned through his monthly wireless data allotment of 2 gigabytes. Beyond that, though, according to Verizon Wireless, what many customers do not realize is the new iPad's LTE connection means that they will use more data even if they don't change their surfing habits that they did over 3G. Take regular video, for example. Verizon estimates that streaming it over an LTE connection runs through 650 megabytes an hour. That's double the amount of data using t- over 3G because the fatter pipe lets more data through. On top of that, the new iPad's sharper screen will encourage some users to view videos in HD, which uses 2 gigabytes an hour over 4G LTE. So a 2 gig cap is almost hilariously small in the LTE connection if you're really not smart about how you use this connection here. And to Brandon... What, what did you expect? Video is big. Streaming it nonstop for hours is a sure way to eat through your data connection, even over 3G. So if you are listening, be intelligent with how you use your LTE connection or data caps in general. Or just be prepared to use the data that you want to pay for. Moving on is the Sprint CEO talking about the iPhone. At Mobile World Live, the CEO said the following. Subsidies are heavy for the iPhone. That is the reason why a percentage of our cus- a huge percentage of our customers is important. But iPhone customers have a lower level of churn, and they actually use less data on average than a high-end 4G Android device. So from a cost point of view perspective, the customer is more valuable than those using Android phones. They are more profitable than the average smartphone customer. So going from Verizon's LTE network with the iPad to Sprint's 3G network, you'll have the opposite problem of being unable to use all the data you want. Not much more to say here, except I'm hopeful Sprint's data network will improve over time so iPhone users can actually use an unlimited amount of data on their network rather than the really slow, almost throttled experience that AT&T users now have. Speaking of AT&T, it's a cool story to see that Tim Cook is actually helping out an iPhone user as he moves to Canada. As many of you probably know, the iPhone has been locked to AT&T for many years. If you buy an AT&T iPhone now, you're pretty much stuck with that carrier for life, even after your contract has expired. A customer had to re- relocate to Canada for work and wanted to use his 3GS in Canada. Well, as you know, AT&T will push a customer to Apple for the solution, and Apple will push the customer to AT&T for a solution, causing a constant loop of trying to get your phone unlocked. The customer in question emailed Tim Cook and asked him for some help. Here's the email. Sorry for the length, but it is a cool email. Hi, Tim. My family is immersed in the Apple brand. All four of our children have been using iPod Touches, iPhones, iPads, and Macs since they were a year old. Our television is a 27-inch iMac using iTV. My kids talk to their grandmother every second day via video Skype on the iMac. All of our computers are Macs, and we have four of them. Apple has touched every aspect of our lives and made it richer. My company recently moved me to Canada for a work assignment for a few years. My wife's iPhone 3GS had finished its contract with AT&T, so I bought her an iPhone 4 the day we moved to Canada. I took her iPhone 3GS and contacted AT&T to see if we could have it unlocked so I can use it with a Canadian carrier with pay-as-you-go plans for casual use. I'm forced to use a BlackBerry for work, but I hate to see that iPhone not be used. This is where my problems began. Basically, AT&T told me that they couldn't unlock it, only Apple could. I called Apple, but was routed through Apple Canada, and they told me to ask to talk to a supervisor at AT&T, because the customer service rep wouldn't know the process. But AT&T definitely can unlock it. 
So says Apple. So I called them back, and the supervisor was adamant that they could not help me. Just jailbreak your phone was AT&T's advice. I didn't want to jailbreak my phone. I like Apple's experience. I don't want to stray from that. However, after several more calls, both AT&T and Apple, I made no progress. So I'm turning to you for my final plea. I love Apple, and he goes on uh, saying he paid $600 for the device and uh, whatnot. So basically, after this email was sent and everything, AT&T Partnership Operations informed this guy that he received an email from Tim Cook, that is AT&T, got contacted from Tim Cook, requesting them to unlock his iPhone. A few days later, his wife sent him an email at work saying, Tim Cook's special assistant just called, and she wants to know if AT&T has unlocked your phone yet. So there you go. Tim Cook continues the legacy of great customer care from the top down. Thanks to 9 to 5 Mac for highlighting this pretty cool story. Closing out mobile data news is a new device and a new service from NetZero that gives you 200 megabytes of data per month for free. NetZero now offers either a $50 computer USB stick or a $100 hotspot with connectivity up to eight devices at a time. The service is 4G, so it should be fairly fast. It's over the clear network, so it may be spotty depending on where you live. The service is pretty good in the U.S. and even has support out here in Hawaii, on Oahu and Maui. This device is basically pretty awesome for if you want to use VoIP with an iPod Touch or something like that. With 200 megabytes of data, you should be able to get on Skype to Skype 66 minutes, or if you're calling regular phones via Skype, about 200 minutes for free using Net Zero, which you don't have to pay for. I'd love to be able to test this out with FaceTime, just audio, seeing how much that could get me. Besides offering the free 200 megabyte plan, the customer, the not the customer, the uh, company, also lets you do higher bandwidth plans, such as 500 megabytes for 10 bucks. 1 gigabyte for 20 bucks, 2 gigabytes for 35 bucks, and 4 gigs for 50 bucks. The data rates are pretty appealing at 200, 500, and 1 gig, but after that, you might as well use Verizon or AT&T or even just the unlimited clear plans that start at $35. I'm looking at getting one of these, and we'll let you know what I think of it. Currently, I have the problem, I have the problem of net zero, thinking Hawaii isn't a state. So I'm not actually able to buy one from their website. So if that problem is solved, I'll try to get one. Otherwise, the clear technology it's based off is pretty nice, and I may end up getting one of those instead. Hopefully this problem is solved rather quickly. Now let's move on to some app news. And there is quite a bit of that today. To kick it off is an update to Air Display for Retina iPads. If you remember, I was pretty disappointed to find out that Air Display did not support the new iPad's resolution. Well, a new blog post went out describing what is coming for Air Display. So here's what's coming. First off, performance tuning. After Apple's announcement, they worked like mad to try to get this working on the iPad with this native resolution. Well, they got that done, but they couldn't get it to ship in time because of performance. It worked like a charm in the simulator, but when they got their iPads, they realized that the four times increased pixel count was killing the frame rates. So the engineers there went back to the laboratory to experiment with codec settings, image filters, color spaces, threaded decompression, and a bunch of other stuff. And basically, they finally got to work with good speeds. What's more, all this performance tuning is going to make the iPad 2 and other devices work all the more better. So your iPad 2 will even have a better air display when that finally ships out. Also, besides getting native resolutions, you get 20... Over 2,000 pixels, you know, pretty amazing display here. They also have this new mode you'll be able to do. So besides 2048 by 1536, you'll also get on Lion and Mountain Lion the ability to turn on the HI DPI mode. This is the hidden feature in, in OS X that renders with double resolution on a double resolution screen. So basically, you'll have retina icons and graphics for your Mac. Pretty amazing and should sell iPads, just this app alone. This update will be coming out in the coming weeks, and I can't wait for it. The app costs $10 and is well worth the purchase. In other app news today is the impressive stat that iPhoto has sold 1 million copies since launch. According to Jim Dalrymple at The Loop, Apple told him yesterday that the newest iOS app, iPhoto, hit 1 million users in less than 10 days after its release. Important, important to note here is it's not downloads. It's just the amount of users that have bought this app. 
They're not counting how many times it's been downloaded, but just unique purchases. That's a cool $5 million for Apple from that single app. Not too bad for a little more than a week. The app does not run on the iPod Touch, so this is just iPads and iPhones that's selling this app. That'll do. That'll do. So next up in app news is a new app for music creators. It's an app from Propellerhead, and according to TUAW, it's called Figure, and it's basically the soul of reason. Basically, it's going to be this way you're going to be able to create music and sketch out ideas on the road. Figure comes with drums powered by the same Kong drums found in Reason and different instruments found in Reason as well. It's going to be a pretty powerful app, and all of this is going to be had for the low price of just a dollar. So you get all this powerful stuff that Reason has, a pretty expensive app for iOS and just a dollar download. Should be available pretty soon, and just thanks to TOAW for pointing out this pretty awesome app. Another big app release for musicians out there is more of a game for musicians or music lovers out there. It's from Smule, the creators of Magic Piano, Magic Fiddle, and countless other awesome music-inspired apps. The new app is called BeatStream, and it's a fast-paced casual game where you play along to the music you already keep on your iPhone. The game is for the iPhone and iPod Touch, but you probably upscale for the iPad. It costs $1. It's available now. Just search for BeatStream in the App Store to find it. Another big app story of the day, and we're almost out of the app news today, is the acquisition of Draw Something by Zynga. Draw Something is becoming a wildly popular game where you draw something, and people guess what you're drawing. And the developer sold it to Zynga for a cool $200 million. Not much more to say here except congrats. That's a nice pile of cash to just come upon from an awesome app. Next up is an update to DirecTV for iPad. The update lets users stream content not only on their home Wi-Fi network, but now over cellular data and away Wi-Fi network. So when you're out on the road for, at Starbucks or something. The new feature is called DirecTV Everywhere. It's limited to DirecTV's audience network, HBO, Cinemax Encore, Sony Movie Channel, and Stars. A nice update that hopefully will expand out to different channels in the future. Last up today, and this is a pretty cool story, uh, is an inst inst integration between Hipstagram and Instagram. The integration allows photos taken with Hipstagram to be sent in a single click to Instagram. This will represent the very first time Instagram has opened up its platform API to third parties and marks a move towards letting photos freely move into Instagram's network from outside sources. It's an interesting move that I hope doesn't detract from the Instagram experience of pretty much having all these filters and things and having the, the square look towards all these photos. So hopefully that experience doesn't go away as it's a cool experience to have. The update should be available soon and uh, you'll be wanting to look for Hipstagram to, to uh, play with this one. Well, that's what's going on in the Apple world today. If you like the show, head over to iTunes, leave a review, and make sure to subscribe in YouTube. Also, check out I Wake Again. It's my Saturday show. It's a $10 a month show where you get an interview or discussion every Saturday, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, depending on what the content is. So every weekend you get a new show called I Wake Again. We're going to wake up to I Wake yet again. You can subscribe over at iwakepodcast.com slash again. Join me tomorrow for another edition of I Wake